Would you join me as we start our welcome song? I'm in the mood for stories. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for stories. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for stories. Hey, how about you? Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. and I am so far excited that you're here today. All right, now, as we get started, can you all help me in finding our rhythm? So, get out your hands, get the wiggles out of your fingers, get some of the cricks and cracks out, and we're gonna tap our legs and clap our hands. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as low as we can. Hello! Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as fast as we can. Hello! Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slow as we can. Hello. Here's the last one. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as quietly as we can. Hey everybody, I am so excited that you're here today. All right, my ukulele keeps wanting to fall on the floor. It's all right. So today, can you tell what our theme is? Can you tell? What's that? What's this one? They're balloons! Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Now, tell me, what are balloons used for a lot of the time? They're used for celebration, right? So at parties, at big achievements, when we've done something really awesome. So our first story is all about our friend Isabel and how she's graduating, but she can't get a balloon. And we're gonna find out why. So this story is called A Balloon for Isabel by Deborah Underwood. Can you tell what kind of animal Isabel is? If you know, keep it to yourself and we're gonna find out in a second. No fair, said Isabel. Yeah, no fair, said Walter. It was two days before graduation. In two days, the possums, the raccoons, and all the other animals would get balloons, but not the porcupines. And Isabel wanted a balloon more than anything in the whole world. Ms. Quill smiled patiently. I'm sorry, but balloons are not safe for porcupines. The porcupines will each get a lovely bookmark. But we already have Halloween bookmarks and Valentine's bookmarks and, and soon you will have lovely graduation bookmarks, said Miss Quill. <laughs> Isabel and Walter sat together at lunch. Can I have your broccoli? asked Walter. I got jelly beans again. 
I wish my dad owned a candy shop, said Isabel. Isabel gazed out the window. Sally told me that when you first get it, a balloon can bounce on the ceiling. And if you pull the string and then let go, it makes a soft, thumpy noise, she said. I heard that after a few days, a balloon floats halfway between the ceiling and the floor, said Walter. It just hangs there like a ghost. Then it shrivels up so you can put it in your empty olive jar with your other good stuff, said Isabel. A bookmark just sits there, said Walter. Well, we have to get balloons, said Isabel. I will think of a plan. Ooh, what do you think Isabel's plan is going to be? The next day, during graduation song practice, Isabel raised her paw. May the porcupines have balloons if we promise to be very careful, she asked. Miss Quill wrote something on the board. Porcupines plus balloons equals <gasps> happiness, said Isabel. Trouble, said Miss Quill. If a balloon popped on your quills, it would scare you. <gasps> I'm not scared of anything except the vacuum cleaner, said Isabel. Well, then it would scare someone else, said Ms. Quill. Walter raised his paw. It would not scare me. A pop balloon could fly through the air and hit someone in the eye, said Ms. Quill. We could wear goggles, said Isabel. That is enough, said Ms. Quill. I know you would like balloons. I would like one too, but the graduation bookmarks are very nice this year. Was that your plan? Walter asked Isabel. It was not my only plan, Isabel said. <gasps> the next morning, Isabel wore her pop stopper to breakfast, but she got stuck in the doorway. <laughs> They're really trying at everything. At recess, Isabel and Walter strapped pillows onto each other, but their quills poked the pillows to pieces. At lunchtime, Isabel wrapped Walter in packing bubbles. But the other kids tried to pop him. Only one more day, Walter said sadly, as they picked up their graduation caps. I'll think of something, Isabel said. But inside, she was not so sure. That evening, Isabel went to Walter's for a cookout. Boy, you sure have a lot of candy, she said. I know said Walter. If you ever get, got a balloon, what color would it be? asked Isabel. Green, said Walter, like broccoli. I would get red, said Isabel. Like a red... <gasps> I have an idea! <laughs> the next day, the door to Miss Quill's classroom flew open. We're pop proved, shouted Isabel. Now may we have balloons. Miss Quill blinked. She stared. She touched one of Isabel's gumdrops with her paw. I don't see why not, she said finally. <gasps> Hooray, said Isabel. Hooray, said Walter and the other porcupines. Are there any gumdrops left? whispered Miss Quill. No porcupine at graduation was happier than Isabel. except for maybe one. The end. Oh, I love balloons. They're so much fun. All right, everybody. If you want to stand up, we're going to do a fun song. And we've done it before. It's called Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. And I know that this song is about going to the moon in a rocket ship, but we can pretend that we're floating on a balloon or up in a hot air balloon. We could do both. So, if you're not familiar with this song, this is how it goes. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Then you crouch down and we say in five, four, Three, two, one, and then you jump, blast off! You think you got it? Would you like to do the song with me? All right. 
Don't forget to jump as high as you can when we say blast off. Here we go. Get your hands ready. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon in five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! <laughs> Wonderful job. Wonderful job. All right, we've got one more story today at story time. And it is called Sebastian and the Balloon by Philip C. Stead. All right, here we go. Sebastian sat high on his roof, something he was never supposed to do. There is nothing to see on my street, he thought. Nothing to see at all. Tonight I'll leave, and I'll see something new for a change. So Sebastian gathered all the things that he would ever need. And when night fell, Sebastian boarded the balloon he'd built from Grandma's afghans and patchwork quilts. He charted a course. He checked the breeze, and he cut the strings, <gasps> and he floated free. Soon it was time for a snack. Sebastian landed his balloon beside the leafless tree. Excuse me, asked a bear. Are you a real balloon pilot? Of course I am, replied Sebastian. Are you a real bear? Of course I am, replied the bear. The two looked each other right in the eyes. Would you like a pickle sandwich? asked Sebastian. The wind picked up and soon it was time to go. Up and up and into a milky gray fog. Can you see the end of my nose? asked the bear. But before Sebastian could answer, there came a loud pop. And they fell down, 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 out of the fog and onto the roof of a ramshackle house. I'm sorry, said a very tall bird. It was my fault. It's okay, said Sebastian. Would you like a pickle sandwich? Then, three sisters called out, What are you doing up there, up on the roof of our house? Our balloon has sprung a leak, answered Sebastian. Oh, oh dear, said the sisters. If only we could find our knitting needles. Luckily, Sebastian had all the things that he would ever need. So the sisters could start their mending. You must be having such fun, they said, making loops and tying careful knots of yarn. It's been so long since we've traveled. When we were very young, we'd pack strawberry sandwiches and climb up over the mountain on the other side. Is the most perfect roller coaster you will ever see. Soon the knitting was done, and when the wind picked up, everyone knew it was time to go. Up and over the mountain to the most perfect roller coaster they would ever see. But the paint was chipped and faded. The beams were bent and broken. The loop-the-loop -loop leaned badly to one side, and flocks of squawking pigeons roosted up and down the track. <gasps> oh, no, cried the sisters. This is not right. Not right at all. Luckily, Sebastian had all the things that he would ever need. So we'll polish and paint. We'll hammer and nail, and we'll pull with all our might. <laughs> At last, we'll look the pigeons right in the eyes and say, <gasps> Go away! And the pigeons flew off all the way to the leafless tree, and the tree was glad to have company. Good work, said the sisters said the very tall bird. Amazing, said the real bear. And 
For the rest of the day and into the night they rode. And rode. Until the wind picked up and it was time to go. The end. I like that story a lot. Have you ever been on a roller coaster before? I have, and I was really scared, to be honest. I It was so tall up, and you went, boom, all the way down. But they looked like they were having a lot of fun. All right, my friends, that is all the time that we have for story time today. If you would like to join me in saying our goodbye, here we go. We're going to put your hands up in the air. Wiggle, wiggle fingers, way up to the sky. Wiggle, wiggle fingers, wave them all goodbye. I will see you next time, next week. Bye-bye.